In this video I'm going to be discussing the sec kinetics of particles problem. Uh, I'm going to use a similar situation as the last video, only it's going to be on an incline. So let's just get straight on to it. Zoom on in. And our first step will be to draw the situation. So let's do that. We have a slope here and that slope has a box on it and that box is moving up the hill with an initial velocity v0 equal to 10 meters per second. The slope of this incline it is at 30 degrees and the coefficient of friction which is important kinetic friction is 0.5. Okay, so now we have that situation in place. Um, just to kind of state it, one thing that we do, will need to know is this is still 100 kilograms. That's important. So now that we have our situation in place, let's just get off to work here. Let's draw a free body diagram of this box. So here's our box. It's more of a rectangle nowadays. And we have what I would call the weight force, which I'm going to put in blue. The weight force pushing straight down. And it goes straight down because it always goes towards, towards the earth, regardless of what slope or incline it's on. And then we have our normal force, which I'm just going to keep in black, which is going to be perpendicular to whatever surface it is sitting on. So if we were to kind of use our imaginations and break both of these vectors into an X and Y coordinate system, but a unique one in that it's associated with the, the line of motion, and the perpendicular of that. So basically along this incline or the, along this slope or incline X will be basically along the path of motion that that box will make. So what we need to do, and I'm going to use cyan to kind of illustrate this, but we need to break this weight, this weight vector up and we need to break that up into two components, which I'm going to just call X and Y. So anyway, if we were to do that, WX would look something along the, like this. And in green would be WY. So now it would be best if we kind of just sat down for a moment and analyze this. If you look at this situation, you realize that the only thing that would be opposing the normal force is going to be the Y component of the weight. Whereas the, the thing that's going to be resisting the motion will not only be the X component of the weight, but the last thing that we haven't mentioned yet which is going to be right up here, right in front, the friction force. So just to kind of list them all out here, what's going to be in the y direction? That would be the normal will equal WY, which we actually already know this to be W cosine of 30 degrees. And that's just based off the incline. Well, we know that W is equal to mass times acceleration or mass times gravity, so 100 kilograms times 9.81 times cosine of 30. 
And when we work that out, we realize that we have, let's see if we have some space over here, nope. We realize that we have 849 point, you know, five, seven newtons. And that's our normal force. That's what's, that's actually, that's the actual force that's being applied into the ground on the ramp. Okay, so that's, that's not terribly difficult to understand, but we need to translate this. So how is this affecting the motion? Well, if we look at the X component, we know that both the WX portion and the friction force are going to be influencing. So let's just solve for each. We add them together and then we we get our answer that way, our solution that way. So friction force is equal to normal times the friction factor, which we've solved for part of this already, 849.57 times the friction factor is 0.5. That's perfect. So 849.57 times 0.5, and that'll equal our friction force, which is going to be 424.79 newtons. This is an actual force that will be slowing. It's the friction portion of the total force that will be slowing this box down. The other portion is going to be due to gravity and it being on an incline. So I'm going to do that in uh, this next part in orange. And it's really simple. Wx is equal to W sine of 30 degrees, which is fairly simple to work out. 100 times 9.81 times sine 30. Which when you solve for all that, That equals 490, 490.5 newtons. And there's our second portion. When we combine them, when we combine these two solutions, we get 915 point, essentially three newtons. I realize that this is the total force that's going to be influencing the motion. So what do we know that influences motion? Well, we can bring it back to force equals ma. Force equals ma. And that's how we'll be able to translate it from kinetics to kinematics. So 915.3 equals 100 times A, which when you work that out, A is equal to 9.15 yada yada. And I'm just going to bring this over here and then green, but acceleration is equal to 9.153 meters a second squared there's our acceleration. Now we can just use the simple kinematic equations and I'll just bring it back to black here but if we use them V2 equals V1 minus just because it's resisting the motion a t. We know that V2 is going to equal zero because we're waiting for it to stop equals V1 which is our initial velocity of 10 meters a second minus our acceleration 9.153 times t which 
when you work that out, T is equal to 1.093 seconds. And that just goes to show you that the incline had a drastic influence on how long it takes for the box to uh, slow down or even stop. So it's just kind of give you a feel for what, um, how to include both friction and uh, the gravity and, and all these other influences on a singular box or mass body. Anyway, um, I hope this helps you guys out. Um, just keep following this same method and uh, we'll see if we can do a similar problem except it's going down a decline and hopefully that will be fairly simple for us to work through. Hope you guys have a nice day.